All right, welcome to DuPod to win the game. Super Bowl edition. Well, almost. Conference title game edition. Frank Schwab, we have our Super Bowl. It's going to be the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Philadelphia Eagles. The ones versus the ones. Exactly what we wanted to see. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to let you kick this one off. Let's let's start off with, uh, obviously, the, the, the Bengals and the, the Chiefs. Um, unbelievable game. Goes right down to the end, twenty three to nothing. Uh, excuse me, twenty three to twenty. Kansas City over the the Bengals. Um, a million different things we can talk about here. I watched this as I was writing uh, in Philly. Um, watched this. I saw the Osai uh, penalty at the end. Looked crushing. Um, I saw Andy Reid trust his defense late. Uh, I mean, there were multiple things that happened in this game that that I think surprised me, but. To me, primary takeaway, Patrick Mahomes, I thought, played, and, and his cast really supported, but I thought Patrick Mahomes showed, played lights out. I think it is a, a legend chapter for him. Um, I know a lot of people not happy with the officiating in this game. Not a big surprise with that. But uh, again, I thought after all this talk about Mahomes and the injury, uh, for him to step up and play the way that he did in this game and in key moments, really to me is just amazing. Now 10 and two in the postseason. Amazing. I think it's what 20, I think it's 20, 27, 27, 10 and two. I mean, just a unbelievable player. I mean, a guy, a high ankle sprain last week and comes out, throws for 326 yards, two touchdowns, 105.4 passer rating. And the one play he really needed to make was with his legs. And he did yep. it. And you just watch him run for that first down. You knew, Oh, this is a moment. And then outside takes the penalty. Look, I, the Bengals have some gripes here, of course, but he, it was a penalty. Like, as soon as the it was second it happened, it's yeah. like, all right, well, that's a penalty. He basically took two steps out of bounds and got shoved. Whether you think Mahomes flopping or not, you just can't. You just can't do it right there. It was so heartbreaking watching him on the bench for yeah. probably about 10, 15 minutes after the game. Just, you know, like, I mean, it's all on his shoulders. First-year player, young guy. I think he's 22 years old. Good player. Just, good player, too. Good player. Yeah, yeah, good player. Yeah, he really emerges here. You just feel sick for him. Mistake that just – it's an effort play. He's, he's giving it his all. Mahomes giving it his all. you got to make a better play in that situation, but he did what he did. Sets up Butker for the game-winning field goal. I, I mean, so many points in this game, it just felt like the, the Bengals were going to take over, and somehow the Chiefs stayed in it. it, it you know, the, the Chiefs started hot, and I think it was 13-3. Yep. You're like, okay, Chiefs are – wow. And then – Bengals, they just had all the momentum after that. Even after after the Chiefs punted, as you referred to, and he trusted his defense, every analytics person said it was a dumb punt on fourth and eight in Bengals territory, but they get the ball back, give it to Mahomes. Good return by Sky Moore to kind of set up Mahomes' heroics and the Osai penalty, of course, too. Uh, I do think we have to talk about official because that, so many people, and I, I think that social media exacerbates all this, right? Yeah. Like, Every, it's so easy to just, oh, the NFL's rigged. Yeah. First of all, the NFL's not rigged. Let's calm down. But I think from, I usually defend officials. I, I say it's a tough job. It's a tougher job anybody wants to say. These guys move at the speed of light. The fact that they catch as much as they catch is pretty impressive. We saw the replacement routes. We saw how bad it can get. But I do think there's a crisis of confidence here. The main, you know, we had a, a situation, a, a sequence, where the, the Bengals seemed like they get off the field on a third down. And all of a sudden, the Chiefs are back on the field. The replay third down, they explain like, oh, no, it was it was called dead before. Right. And everybody the, freaks the out about the it. Yeah. The redo third down, and then there's a holding penalty. Oh, by the way, an obvious holding penalty on Eli Apple. But still, everybody freaks out. The whole NFL is rigged community is just has their holiday in front of them. What can be done about the officiating, Charles? Because, I, it, look, it needs to get better. It does. It's... It's, it's better than people give it credit for because it's a really, really tough job. But at the same time, how many times have we talked on the Sunday Night Pod and brought up officiating of this mistake, that mistake, that miscall, this error, this roughing the passer? That, what could be done to fix this? Because the NFL really has to take a step back and see what it can do about the officiating. Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's funny, too, because um, after the, the uh, 49ers, Eagles, I'm standing in the Niners tuttle, right? And I'm watching them come off. And um, all of a sudden, uh, John Lynch, as he's passing the officials' locker room, screams something. Okay, and Lynch was probably 
yeah, probably 30 feet from me. So I couldn't hear exactly what he said. It wasn't, it was, it was short. And to me, probably had expletives. And I couldn't tell exactly what it was, but it was short enough that I'm like, he probably cussed. <laughs> like it was not. And and then I looked at him as he passed me, and man, he was heated. And I and I thought, this is 31 to 7, bro. <laughs> like, I mean, right. I don't, I don't wasn't I, you know, there were definitely issues. There were some some calls in this game that were problematic, yep. did not look yep. good, but it's also 31 to 7. You can't blame it on the officiating. He didn't, by the way. He did not later blame it on the officiating. But um, I just thought it was interesting given watching that and then kind of seeing that everything unfold with the chiefs and the Bengals. And plus remember, this has not been a clean playoffs. There have been other issues over the course yes. of this playoffs that people have brought up. Um, I don't know. I don't know what can be done. That's probably for a midweek podcast It's probably for later, but it's not good that, that we're again talking about it in a game of this magnitude. I would push back on the whole rigged aspect because I'm like, Look, that's stupid. It's, well, look, I mean, look, you just you, go out and say it. even it's, even if you're going down that avenue, I'm going to tell you something right now. The NFL is not stupid to the star power of Joe Burrow. OK, right. so this okay. idea that they're just rigging it and jacking it all for Patrick Mahomes is not correct. This is no look, Joe Burrow is not Daniel Jones. The NFL knows and they see all kinds of segments of non by the way, non football fans who are starting to gravitate toward Joe Burrow, just as this kind of iconic, good-looking, you know, whatever commodity that he is. For people who are on TikTok, there's literally droves of non-football fans who are freaking obsessed with this guy. The league knows that. They're not stupid. So this idea that they're like, well, geez, we can't have Joe All Burrow. Right. <laughs> I mean, look, real stupid. quick, Charles, let me put it to you this way. If this Chiefs-Eagles game is going to get 110 million viewers, do you know what Bengals-Eagles would get? Probably 110 million. It's the same people. thing. Like, yeah, it, yeah. Just, it doesn't move the needle it's at all. Yeah, it's, 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 it's stupid to say this is right. Yeah. But it's still a crisis of confidence in, it is. in these officials. I know it's more of a midweek thing, but this is such a big story coming out of this for if you're not a fan of, of any of these four teams, you're, you're just complaining about the officials. Basically. Okay. That's not a good look for the NFL. Well, Frank, the OSI penalty, for example, I, I will say this. I don't care what Mahomes did. I, I literally do not care after the arms were extended and he was two steps into the boundary as a defender coming up on the back of a quarterback. I don't care if you have momentum or not. You can't put your hands on the back of a quarterback and extend your arms out on the boundary. Like when you're in the white and you do that, right. it's going to be 15 yards every, every single, single time. Point. I don't care if Patrick Mahomes did a 15 minute, I'm on fire, stop, drop and roll all the way up the tunnel. <laughs> OK, it didn't matter. The second he extended his arms, I looked at it and I was like, oh, my God, that's a terrible penalty. Like you can't. The push moment, the, the set before they threw the fight, the, the second, the instant it happened, you knew. And I feel for the kid. And it's just it's, I do, too. I do. Too. But, you know, people, the, the screenshot folks will get on oh. Orlando Brown on that play. I think it was Orlando had a pretty clear holding call. Didn't get called. I think he was brought back and Trey Hendrickson. But these things happen. Look, I, I it's it, but it's again, like you said. It's been through the playoffs when we're talking about this game, that game, this call, that call, and through the season two. I think they do have to do something about that. Real quick, I don't want to let the, the Bengals slide here. I think one really, like, I don't know how much of it you got to watch the post game because I know you're writing and trying to get back to your hotel there in Philly. But, I mean, after the game, you know, I. Kelsey comes out and basically grabs the microphone from talking. Tracy Wilson. Yeah, 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 yeah he goes just as burrow head my ass. Yeah. And Mahomes gets his shots in, and Kelsey later on calls a Cincinnati mayor a jabroni. By the way, what is the Cincinnati mayor doing? That was one of the most cringe moments I've seen between politics and sports. Just politicians stay out of sports. It never turns out well. How could the Bengals be so stupid? Yeah. A week ago. They thrived off this whole like, oh, give them their refunds back. We're gonna, we've been disrespected, and then for the whole week they disrespected the okay. Chiefs. And you could just tell this is good. And not that the Chiefs need more motivation, but they'll poke Frank, the bear. Frank, what, what are you doing? The the this you know better give back the refunds thing. The key there was it happened after they they didn't talk about how pissed off they were up until that you know to, to winning mm. that game. Mm. It was after they beat the Bills, and then they had right. some to talk. Fine. That's after the fact. You don't say stuff before. You don't let Burrowhead get out, okay? Your stupid-ass mayor, which, you know, look, they can't control the mayor. They can't, 
They can't. No, they, I know they can't I don't control know. the mayor. But you know what? If I was Cincinnati fans, I'd have been pretty pissed. Like when I saw that, I'm like, you know what, bro? This, this whole, you know, he's your son. Take a paternity test thing with bro. I. It was cringeworthy, but it was just stupid. And it was, you know, just there's, stupid. there's, and by the way, you're the mayor. Okay, you're not tackling anybody. We do. Right. Okay, you're not running down on kickoffs. Okay, shut up, dude. Like no one cares what you. It's there's nothing funny about this. And the last thing, I, let let Bill Belichick have a politician give somebody some bulletin board material in the middle of the Patriots dynasty. The guy would have been be a, out of office. Be a recall. Yeah, it would be a recall yeah, election it, on Monday. It would have been right? over. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So I I would think there will be a lesson learned here about. Um, I, I said myself, the idea of lighting cigars after playoff wins, probably a bad idea because that's typically kind of a championship type thing. If you're not going to pop mm-hmm. champagne after winning a divisional round game, you know, let's let up on the cigars. Like, I get it. I understand what you're doing, but you're learning a lesson here. And there are going to be some teams like this team that you're going to go toe to toe with for 10 years, however long this goes. And they're going to keep track of this and they're going to be pissed off, rightfully so. So it's, yeah, I, I think the, the Bengals got a little loose. They were feeling themselves. They proved a point against Buffalo. They had a good record going against Kansas City. But at the end of the day, you probably want to limit the amount of you talk going into a, a game like that because they absolutely were going to use it. And clearly, even Andy Reid yeah. brought it up. If Andy Reid's bringing it up, <laughs> right. you know, every everybody yeah. at that point yeah. is bringing it up. So um, I, just amazing. Just, again, a young team that, it's cocky. It's a cocky team, and that's part of what fuels them. But this kind of bit them a little bit. I thought it was just they didn't lose. Just got to be a little. Loose. I don't think they lost. No, they the, didn't. No, no, they didn't. They didn't. They lose they didn't. because of trash talk. They just got embarrassed. Yeah, I get that now on the other side of yeah. the trash talk. I Frank, when this game started, so I'm I'm writing right. I'm in the box. I'm writing. I'm watching yeah. the game, and it's on silent. But I'm like instantaneously. I'm like, man, you know what? The Chiefs are whooping their ass up front. Like defensively, the Chiefs yeah. were yeah. the Chiefs were stomping on their oh. offensive line. I'm like, wow, this is Chris not- Jones, man, my. Goodness, and I, early on, first couple of years, I'm like, they're in some trouble. If this is how you know if yeah. Burrow's going to get sacked and pushed around and pressured like this, this is completely different. This is what we expected against the Bills. Did not happen. Now it's happening here, and you know they're they're creating penalties, they're creating pressure, they're sacking him, um, you're pushing him into poor decisions. Uh, I think it was. I saw a stat. I don't know how accurate this was, but I was coming back in my Uber. I was kind of rolling through some of the stats. I thought I saw someone said they were uh, Burrow's two two of eight under duress. I have no doubt. Like it's, I as soon as I saw that early, I was like, okay, this is going to be a, a dogfight for um, the the Cincinnati Bengals in this one. And Burrow made some mistakes. The the thing I took away afterward, we said, you know, you learn from wins, you learn from losses. I believe that. I just hope that they they can figure out. Don't add any other little element to anything when you got to go into somebody else's house period especially a team like this yeah don't put poor gas on that um i think yeah you know, i'm sure we have a long time talking about the Chiefs, but real quick with the bengals i, I think they're, look they're gonna be here they're gonna be here for a long time I, I don't i don't look at this team as a window closing type of team i look at this as they're still there they're, they're still gonna be fine but they close pretty fast i mean you start to deal with borough cap hits and all that kind of stuff so a uh, missed opportunity for them i thought Many ways, they all played the Chiefs in this game, but just a, a few. They got off to a bad start. Offensive line obviously did not play well, but they were without three starters. Everybody forgot to talk about that, right? Like last week, it was the big story. Oh, and then they have one good game against the Bills in the snow, and everybody thinks the Bills or Bengals offensive line is healed. It wasn't. It was a major problem here because they could not block Chris Jones at all. But overall, I think the Bengals are going to be just fine. This core is really, really good. They'll be here for a while. The, the they could be back in the AFC Championship game next year, but you blew an opportunity. You really did. I mean, it, it, these things don't come along that often. No, they don't. And I, I'll tell you what, if I'm a Chiefs fan, I'm feeling pretty good that, you know, to me, this was a good game for Steve Spagnuolo. Um, yeah. It's a game right. I think you need to see. You need to see them get pressure when it mattered. Um, I thought the coverages were pretty good. You know, I thought, look, I, I, the, the fourth down play where Jamar Chase makes that unbelievable catch. You know, like the, the coverage was there. They just didn't make the play on the ball, but they were there. It wasn't like they were blown. It, it was yeah. plays. It was a good call, just bad. Ex- and Burrow Chase just made great. It was bad execution. That happens. Yeah. T. Higgins, T. Higgins losses some guy in the end zone. 
well, okay. Well, I mean, it's going to happen. These guys are great players. But yeah, I thought Spags had a good game. Yeah, I did. And so I'm, you know, I'm feeling um, encouraged by that, definitely. And I'm feeling encouraged that Mahomes could put up the game that he did. Uh, what, 29 of 43, 326, two touchdowns, no interceptions. The fumble was a weird thing. I mean, it was just clearly a cold That's ball. That's crazy. Cold ball just, about, you know, squirts out of his hand. It was really weird. Um, I think the Chiefs, you know, you, look, they're scrapping. I don't think the Chiefs right now, even though they beat the Bengals, I think because of the fact that Mahomes is hobbled, I still don't think they're they're playing at their tip top. You know, they're not 100% healthy. Um, mm-hmm. And yet they were able to gut out and win this game. You know, that was a really good game against an opponent they're probably going to see for a while. Um, yeah. We need, they need to get some receivers back before the Super Bowl. They were really thin at that position. And that, that speaks to Mahomes again. Mark was yeah, Valdez Valdez. Scantley. How about that? Huh? Showed up 116 yeah, and a touchdown. Up. And I mean, he hasn't been there all season, but he was worth the money today. Yep. I'll tell you that. And real quick, you have to give some credit to Travis Kelsey, too. I mean, leading up to the inactives being turned in, it was like this hey, we don't know if he's going to play. I assumed he was because he hasn't missed a game since 2014 due to injury. But you were like, I don't know. There's reports out there about the back. He, he was 7 to 78 in the touchdown. Looked good. Like, I mean, if we're going to give all Mahomes all the credit for playing through pain, Give some to Kelsey, got, Kelsey too, because this was a legendary performance for him too. He got doubled like quite a few times. I mean, there were quite yeah. a few times I was looking up, and I'm just like, all right, let me watch this play unfold, and let me just watch Kelsey and see what the defense does. And you could see, you know, the way they were defending him. That he, you know, he had the attention almost every single play. If it wasn't a linebacker and a safety, or a, you know, a corner or safety. I mean, he, every single play, almost every play that I looked up, you could see that you know the way that they were playing him they were waiting to see if he was Patrick Mahomes' first read. And if he wasn't Mahomes' first read, you could kind of see the defense adjust on the fly. But um, all in all, it lived up. I think it lived up to everything that it could be. It was a really good game. Um, You know, as you said, I I would like to see some some wide receivers come back. Um, I think they're probably going to have to run the ball a little bit better, you know. Um, Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now. I was going to bring that up. I mean, 20 for 42 yards, 2.1. No run longer than six. Hey, every run call they had was just a loss. It's just like you, you just lost the play. You're just making life more difficult on Mahomes. That's all you're doing. That's how bad the run game is. Yeah, and Philly, yeah, I mean, trust me, you you, you know, Philly's got the ability to stop the run, especially if they, they know it's coming. We'll get to that. All right, anything else you got on this game? No, I just, again, it was a very good game, two great teams, and I, I, I haven't looked yet, I assume, that with first place schedules are slated to meet in the regular season next year. And that's going to be a fun one. Put that thing on Sunday night football, because now this is a rivalry. Now this is a legit, like these two teams don't like each other rivalry. I'm here for the next few years of it, man. It's going to be really, really good. Congrats to the chiefs. Look, I, I I don't think you did. I I did. I'll admit to it. I wrote the chiefs off a little bit in the off season. So what are you doing? Trading Tyreek Hill. Oh, I uh, the rest of the AFC West. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) The rest of the AFC West is caught up to you. And here the chiefs are number one seed in the AFC going to another Super Bowl, third and four years for Mahomes and Reed. Just unbelievable team. They're they're really they look at they win this. It's we're start talking about a, a mini dynasty at least. Arrowhead mattered too. It mattered. Yeah. It absolutely yeah, it so. absolutely yeah, mattered. So this like fans, fan you know, Chiefs fans, Niners fans, Eagles fans, everybody, you know, Bengals fans, anybody listening right now, if you're an NFL fan, if the league takes away conference championship games, which mm. you know, who knows if this is myth or not we're going to find out a lot honestly during the super bowl um but if if that ever happens it's a bunch of because a game like this absolutely i can tell you from being in philly tonight it was as pat like when you look at the tippy top roll the rim of the stadium where people are there's like the blimp and then people and they and you're like those people are going to fall off the edge of the stadium it was filled all the time you like you could not fit another person in the lincoln financial um Arrowhead mattered. And, you know, I think Lincoln yeah. Financial mattered. These home games, you play, you know, to, to lock that down for a reason. Yeah. They matter in these situations. And they're earned. They're not just given yeah. on a rotating basis. They're absolutely earned. If, if, the, if the Kansas City Chiefs get the number one seed, they deserve to play the conference championship game at home. I have no – we are totally aligned with that. I, I think it's ridiculous that they would even consider it otherwise. Let's swing it ahead to the game you were at, which was not as exciting, but a big statement. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles win – 31 to 7 over the San Francisco 49ers. Now, this game went sideways in the first quarter. Hassan Reddick's on a pass rush on a third down. I think it was third down. He hits Brock Purdy's arm 
it looks like an incomplete pass. No, it's a fumble on review. And then it's like, oh, the 49ers trainers looking at Brock Purdy. This is bad. He tries to go out, and then he's like, he just comes back, and Josh Johnson goes in the game. Josh Johnson obviously gets knocked out later. I, I mean, w- w- it, it just had to feel like once once Purdy was out of the game, and it's it was kind of weird that we're talking about Purdy like this, it but over. it was like, yeah, it's over. Like, you just felt like – but there was a moment there. I will say yeah. this. There was a moment in the second quarter. Oh, no McCaffrey had that touchdown. I know, run. but li- listen, Frank. I, really? Sitting there was there, never a moment. No, really, sitting there really watching, when, when I saw McCaffrey score the touchdown, I know everyone's like, oh, seven great and seven. Play, great play, by the way. Great Unbelievable play. play. Unbe- I mean, like basically, th- he bears four guys on that play. Yep. Mm-hmm. Amazing. I watched it happen. I thought, man, 7-7, seven, seven, they're keeping it tight. Is this going to be one of these games where they, you know, oh, they keep it close all the way, and then somehow they're able to gut it out? You could feel slippage. Like you just watched and you could feel slippage. And I was like, it's only a matter of time before there's a mistake, whether it's Josh Johnson or someone else, there's going to be a mistake. There's going to be a turnover. Something's going to happen. And as soon as there's a deficit, that's when this is really going to become an issue because the second it becomes a deficit, Josh Johnson's going to have to throw. Okay. Like, especially get it beyond one touchdown. So when it was 21 to seven, I was like, okay, this is their, their screen. Like this is, and yeah. I can tell you right now, one thing, Tyler Croft, Okay, a tight end trying to block Hassan Reddick, and it was actually drawn up that way is it's a mistake. Okay. And and I'm not gonna kill like Kyle Shanahan on it. You asked Croft to do something, but you know, Hassan Reddick is quietly, a lot of people don't understand the disruptive power he had as as a pass rusher this year. Fantastic player during the regular season. I think he's been yep. even better. It's I maybe even exponentially better in the postseason. Putting a tight end on him is is insanity, and that is why um, Brock Purdy got hit the way that he did. The arm injury is unfortunate. Like I, I think a couple inches forward, maybe even a couple inches back, he doesn't he doesn't suffer that injury where he does. It just happened to be collided, you know, right when he's letting it go. Brandon Ayuk looked like he was coming open. It was going to be a big play, um, changed the entire complexion of the game. And you know, what I ended up writing was like, when you watch this, then Josh Johnson goes out with a concussion and you're like, this is beyond over. You, you are now yeah, one was. quarterback, two quarterbacks. Now you're through your third quarterback. Now you're through your fourth quarterback and you're strapping a play call sheet on the arm of Christian McCaffrey. And I'm like, oh my God, you're literally prepping your marquee running back to run the wildcat. This is insanity. And that, and afterward, that's what they said. They were just like, look, there's nothing. Kittle, Kittle was like, look, you know, someone asked, you know, are you like about his emotions? Like, he was like, he like, and I'm paraphrasing here, but this is pretty close. You know, um, how do I feel losing an NFC championship game without a quarterback? Um, you know, he said it feels like, or something like, I mean, like it was yeah, I heard that quote. everybody. It, there's no doubt. It was just, there was no getting around it. And I kind of felt like everybody was robbed of what could have been a really, really good game um, because it, you, I've never seen a team that good in an, in, an, in a conference title game not only be one-dimensional, but you're one-dimensional to the point where Kittle was like, we went out there. They dropped down six defensive linemen because they knew Brock wasn't throwing it, and they put Brock back in the game because they wanted to be able to hand the ball off rather than just snapping it to McCaffrey because when you snap it to McCaffrey, you know where the ball's going. You know, there's, there's no mystery whatsoever. Um, even though Purdy could could throw it, it, it gives you an ability maybe to, I don't know, pull, scheme some things in the run game, whatever. But Kittle said it. it was like Once they knew that we could do nothing but run, there was literally nothing we could do. We had to run into it and yeah. just hope. It was over. I, I We talked about it a little bit before we started recording. I would have gone McCaffrey Wildcat, but you made the point. You're screwed either way. Like, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, I would have just tried to play 11 on 11. Frank, you know the Eagles knew what Purdy could not throw the ball. They're playing kind of Frank well. Kittle said they had 15 plays. He said, he said, he said, you know what, oh. you know what our playbook was when we lost the fourth quarterback. And, and I don't think it was exactly the, that was the exact number, but I, you got the gist. Like that was it. Right. It was about 15 plays in the playbook that they could run 15. I mean, that's not, yeah. and remember 15, like that's not even accounting for situation. That's total. So situationally, you might only have two. <laughs> like, like yeah. that's like a yeah. nightmare. Oh, I know. It's horrible. Do you remember like something like this happening in a playoff game before? Because I couldn't. No, I, never. I couldn't remember a team basically being like, we got to play without a quarterback. No. Because Purdy was just, like you said, he was just in there to hand the ball off. 
he I can't remember. Frankie literally couldn't throw. He so he said that like I and mean, when he described it afterward, I was like, wow, this is really over. So when the fumble happened, he goes off the field. They're they're trying to judge whether it's a fumble or not, right? Purdy asked for a ball. He throws it a couple of times. And he basically is like, he's like, my arm could just feel, he said it felt like shocks going up and down his arm from basically his, his, uh, you know, lower, lower shoulder, like elbow to his wrist. And he was like, he went to Shanahan. He was like, I can't throw deep. Like, he's like, if we're going to throw it, it's got to be just a short, you know, if we can do that, it's got to be just like a short little throw. And I'm like, man, you're screwed. And we're all watching from the press box. And the thing that was crazy was they worked with him for a second. He threw. And then all of a sudden there was no one around him. It was like this abyss. And you're like, wow, it's got to be really bad if they just gave up. Like they just were like, he's just, <laughs> he's just done. Like there's nothing we can yeah. do here. He's done. And we're like, wow, he really is not coming in. And then it took Johnson. They only had two quarterbacks. That's it. They had two quarterbacks up. Johnson goes down. You don't have a choice. Wildcat or put Purdy in and just go, hey, just hand it off. Don't throw it. He threw it once, but it was like it was a nothing. Like a two yard swing pass, whatever. So that was as far Real as quick, I could go. Now, I mean, because this is going to be a story. You were in the, you know, you were talking to them afterwards. What do you think the prognosis is on Purdy here? We're talking uh, UCL, right? It, you know, they're going to do the MRI, but yeah, it could be. I mean, it's, this could be pretty significant. And, yeah, you know, based on, Trey Lance, come on down, right? You know, like, it's, I, I mean, if it's the worst news. Here's here's the crazy thing about this, too. I'm just telling you from being from being in, you know, covering last week in San Francisco, covering this week, spending a lot of time talking about the, the Niners with people. I'm telling you before this injury, there's zero doubt in my mind. Zero. Zero. I will say it one more time. Doubt in my mind that Purdy was going to be the starting quarterback. However, maybe not in name, but that they would say, it's an open competition. We'll see what happens here. Um, and I, I'm just telling you, it might change now because they don't have any other option. They're going to have to do, you know, look, they're going to have to work with somebody in the off season. This is some kind of a long-term injury. Um, uh, like Trey Lance, this might be what it took to get him into a wow. position where they are force fed back into the idea of we got to get him. I'm, I'm just telling you, man, I don't know what's going on with Trey Lance in that organization. I can just tell you that the confidence level between Brock Purdy and Trey Lance prior to this game, it was night and day. And that is not good for Trey Lance. I'm telling you that right no, now. No. That's that's really, really interesting. I, I mean, yeah, because I mean this bad I mean, this is Tommy John surgery for Brock Purdy. I, I don't know if we've seen too many quarterbacks have to deal with that. I think Ben Roethlisberger did a second to last year. Took him a year to come back. I mean, this isn't one of those, hey, you'll be ready by training camp type of surgeries for, for a guy whose sole job is to throw yeah. a ball. Like, yeah. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm, I'm just going to say this right now. They're, you better not clip this. I know you guys are probably going to clip this. <laughs> probably going to clip this right now. But here's, here's the thing. I think Brady, I think Tom Brady is like sitting there and it's like, look, Tampa – it's either Tampa and then, I, or I think Tom just gonna be like, you know what, man, I'm not doing this. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm probably just going to be done. You know, what am I going to do? So it kind of feels like run it back with Tampa, take some time to figure that out. Um, or he's going to retire. But now I will say this, if Purdy has to have a significant surgery, now I don't know if it'd have to be Tommy John, right? Let's say it was something like Tommy John. That's a year. Sure. He's done. Done for a year. Yep. Okay. If that's the situation, I can't get out of my mind the fact that when Tom played in Levi, that image of him stopping in the big maintenance dock where they had up all the historical pictures of the Niners and Tom's taking pictures in there mm -hmm. with his phone. I, it just stuck with me. And, and when I walked by that several times when I was there, I was like, I, every time I walked by it, I just thought about Brady standing there and being like, no, you know, you don't just, it's not a nothing thing. It's not, it's not a nothing yeah, thing yeah, just yeah. to walk by this and be like, and straight up, like, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but if Purdy goes out a year, and I'm telling you their confidence in Trey Lance is very low right now. Um, and Tom says, yeah, you know what? I, I, I've always wanted to play for the 49ers. I run it back to the 49ers. Wow. It's, it's, a, wow. it's a dream growing up. You know what? It's on the opposite side of the country from where my kids are going to be in Miami. This really sucks. But come on guys i'm an assassin i'm a savage 
you can say whatever you want. Like I'm at the end of the day, this is what defines me as much as I love my kids. Um, I'm not going to rule it out. And I will just say that now wow. it's January 30th wow. at, you know, 12, 14 AM in the morning. We'll see what happens. Let's wow. wait and see what the prognosis is on Purdy first. Yeah. yeah. They're totally clipping that by the way, uh, <laughs> just to move on to the totally hundred percent like that. That's gold. What are you talking about? Brock Purdy injury leads to Tom Brady with the Niners. Yeah. I can see it. Um, well, let's move on to the Eagles. Just I do want to talk about focus on them. Look, I mean, they kind of got lost late in the season, into the postseason a little bit. Even in the lead up to this game, from week one to right now, the Eagles have been the best team in football. Period. End of story. They are now sixteen to one with Jalen Hurts as their starting quarterback. They do everything well. They are they are really really good football. I, I I thought the stat was unbelievable by by Ed Werder, and. Kind of took me by surprise, but then you think about it, and you're like, wow, there's only been four teams before the Eagles to win both the divisional round and the conference championship by at least 21 points. Here were the first four teams to do it. 1978 Steelers, 1985 Bears, Ooh. 1988 Niners, 1989 <laughs> Niners. Four of the greatest Dominant. 10 yeah. football teams yeah. who have ever played this game, <laughs> and now the 2022 Philadelphia Eagles are on that list. I'm not saying the Eagles are going to end up on that list, but when we take a step back and look at the Eagles and just the, the big picture view of their season, again, it, Jalen Hurts gets hurt. They lose two games. I don't care. 16-1 to with that guy in the lineup. And the one loss was there, there was a missed face mask. There. They were going to win that game. They were going to beat the Commanders that night. I am fully, fully on board with that. This is a really good football team. And, they again, this was one of those games where – all the talks about the San Francisco 49ers quarterbacks, I get that. But Eagles pass rush did that, right? Like, like they were, if 85 Bears, let's bring them up again. The 85 Bears were knocking quarterbacks out. We we're like, oh, what a fierce defense. Well, same thing with the Eagles now, okay? They, yeah. they knocked both those quarterbacks out. They were trying to, but they did. And then we're not talking enough about how this Eagles offense just put up, you know, you put up 31 points on the 49ers defense. Are you kidding me? Like that, they, I thought they, they, I get it. The 49ers, Really like, like down after a while. They know they're not going to compete. They give up a lot in the second half, but still impressive. I, I was really, really impressed with the Eagles today. It's hard not to be. This was not, and I, I implore people to watch this game again because we'll replay it this week. We'll probably replay it next week, whatever. I implore people to watch it again because it was not Jalen Hurts' best game. I mean, not even close. It wasn't even close. Right. I didn't even. Yeah, Charles McDonald wrote about this. I wanted to get this. In. I thought he was okay. Like, I was, it wasn't anything special. I wasn't sitting there going. I don't even know if he was I, okay. He was. He, he did not look healthy. Yeah, he, no, he, he doesn't. I mean, and he admits he's not. He admits he's not. Right? Yeah, he said he said that he's in significant pain. You know that he's you know he's gotten it out, and then again, that's par me paraphrasing. But um, he's going to have two weeks now to try and get himself as right as he possibly can. But you know, it was thirty-one to seven again against a totally one-dimensional Niners team, but a great defense. Um, it, it what's scary about it is yeah that they they played like this they were kind of one dimensional too because Hertz wasn't lighting it up um not nearly you know he's not nearly anything like he was earlier in the season we're like wow that's the mvp okay he's putting it all together uh but defensively i will say this like as much hype okay and deserved by the way i think this is probably one of the best defenses to not make a super bowl um as much hype as the san francisco defense got the Philly defense is right there, man. Like they're watching them, watching 70, that front. They had seventy sacks this season. Watching that yeah. front Ugh. is sick. Yeah, like they are mm -hmm. now. I still wonder, dedicated, like running. You know, can they? But you know, the, the Chiefs. I don't know. The Chiefs are going to be like, hey, we got to run it on. We got to run it on them. Right. Like, no, it, you know, like I don't. It's a weird matchup. Man. It is. It's not. I don't. It's not the matchup that I think Philly would be sitting. I, I would have been more worried about the Niners at full strength. Um, in, in terms of the running game, than I would have mm -hmm. um, the, the mm -hmm. Chiefs just because the Niners are doing all kinds of different things. They were dedicated to it. They're protecting the quarterback. Chiefs don't have to do that necessarily, um, even though I'd like them to. But um, yeah, it's I, look, Philly is, uh, I think they're a far more complete defense. I think Reddick, again, I think Reddick. What a signing that bro. was. Howie Roseman, what a And I, I mean, like, what was it? It was like, Goodness. I think it's like 15 per, which is just theft at this point. Watch, yeah, he didn't, he didn't break the bank. If you watch him like in a, this game. Wow, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. yeah, you watch him in this game. That's just like his third team in three years, you know, and because, you know, he played Carolina last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You watch him in this game, and I was like, damn, 
this dude, I get it. He's like, whatever, 240. He's disruptive. Like, fast yeah. as hell. Like, it just, mm-hmm. he's just a total disruptor. And, and it's not the classic 270 Miles Garrett, Nick Bosa. Like, it's he's a different body type. But, man, he wreaks havoc. And... Yeah. I mean, he really came up as an off-ball linebacker. That was yeah, the. Yeah. I mean, when he was drafted first round by the Cardinals, people were like, "Is he an off-ball linebacker? Is he an edge rusher? We don't know." Well, he's really settled in as an edge guy because, yeah, he was just wrecking shop the whole game, and he has been all season. He's he's been one of those rare signings. It's just grand slam. Like you get, it's it's unbelievable the impact he's made. Again, how he doing great work. I mean, that defense the defense doesn't get enough credit. It's good. It's it's very good offensively. They're good. Real quick on Hurts. One last like. Where are we at on Hurts? So, do you think he's going to be okay for the Super Bowl? Do we? Is he a problem going in? Like today, I'm just looking at the stats right now. They had the 29 yard pass to Devontae Smith, which shouldn't have been a catch. He dropped it, but nobody knows. And, and had any challenge. by Whatever. the way, had to be a total circus catch to catch it in the first place. Hey, right, correct, correct, yeah. correct. Kenneth Gainwell caught one for 17. I don't even remember it to right. be honest, but I know it wasn't downfield. The, the the longest pass other than that was 11 yards to AJ Brown. You are not winning a Super Bowl if your longest pass is go, eleven yards. Go back. Like it's, and, he, they have no nothing downfield right now. Go back and look at the deep stuff. I mean, that's when you're really going to be like, ooh, because at one point you, uh-huh. you kind of got to the point where you're like, they just need to stop throwing the deep stuff. Like this is because it wasn't working. And and it was so, hanging up. It was yeah. late. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't. You know, there was another time too where he was rolling to his right. I don't remember what point in the game it was. I just remembered I could see the whole play unfolding, and I was like. It was in the flat. I don't know if it was a linebacker, or safety, or corner. I, I can't, for life of me, I can't remember who the defender was. But I just remember thinking to myself, okay, it, you know, you're watching it so fast. In my brain, it was like, right now, he's a tick too late. He can't throw it. And that's when he threw it. And the and the, oh. the defender undercut it. Didn't end up picking the ball because it was too close to the to the boundary. And it, and it was out of bounds. But I, it was, it was, you know, I was like, this wasn't a good decision. The timing was horrible. Everything about it was wrong. And you better be careful. You know, you don't want to get in that situation with the Chiefs where you're doing that. And, and I thought to myself, I'm like, yeah, he's not. Something's not right there. Like, it's just, I don't know if he's going to be a problem or not. I have no clue. I, I wonder if we're going to get into the offseason, whether they win or lose the Super Bowl, and we're going to find out, like, oh, you know what? This was, this was a lot worse than we thought. Like, it's, you know, it's, now we're going to tell you what, what the reality was that he was dealing with. Um, we'll see. It's two weeks. You know, we'll see what can happen with two weeks. Yeah, have- I mean, he, I, he's going to be about, what, eight weeks removed from the original injury at that point? Something in the seven, maybe. I, it's, yeah, I have, but it, it didn't look good today to the point of, like, he has been tested. He's played three games, but each of those games, the second half was just, uh, okay, let's just let's just close this one out because we got such a big lead. I, I think his final throw today came with 410 left in the third quarter. I looked it up at one point. He just didn't have to throw. He has not been tested as a passer, really, since he came back. I thought he looked healthy against the Giants, but and then you look back, you're like, well, maybe not. He just had the one shot play to Devontae early. This game, I was like, he's not healthy. You're, you're right. Something's off. He, I, just something's maybe rusty. I don't know what it is. He didn't get hammered. You know, it wasn't a game where he just got obliterated, right? So it's like, you know, and then you had, what was the stat uh, with the Niners? Wasn't it like uh, the teams, the following week, the team played them, they were like 0-15 oh, yeah. oh or whatever? I think it's all for the season. Oh, yeah, for the, yeah. for the yeah. season. Yeah, whatever. I don't and think anybody, anybody, nobody won, won their next... game after playing the 49ers. Right. Okay. So now you have. Whether it was 15 or however. Many. Right. Right. But I mean, now, so you have the, you know, the Eagles having played them. Niners are physical. I didn't feel like, you know, they, they feel like they beat up the Eagles necessarily or not. So I don't, I don't know. It's like, that's the problem with the one dimensionality of this game is where you're like, what does this mean then? Because this doesn't really fit yeah. with anything else we've seen with the Niners. So is this is it impossible to use this game as a data point because of the fact that they were so behind the eight ball from the second series, the second offensive series in the first quarter? You know, how much did that change the complexion of of what the Niners were really able to do over the course of this game and what toll did they really exact? Plus, you have two weeks to kind of recover. I didn't feel like Kurtz got beat up necessarily in this game. So um I think he'll go there, you know, and be uh, I hope so. be feeling at least better than he, he is when yep. he wakes up um, tomorrow morning. All right, so we won the Super Bowl. Two number one seeds, to, you know, the two teams, I mean, the two guys that we talked about MVP, you know, for a long time okay. this season until Hurts got, you know, injured, um, missed games. Um, 
I, I think he was pushing Patrick. Um, it, it's it, it's funny because Hertz isn't going to be 100 percent in the Super Bowl. Mahomes isn't going to be 100 percent in the Super Bowl. <laughs> We're going to basically get the best of of what these two teams have. But I also think this is an opportunity for AJ Brown to have his moment. This is an opportunity for Miles Sanders. This is an opportunity for Pacheco. It's an opportunity for you know another opportunity for Travis Kelsey. Whatever receiver steps up. Um, or even Hassan Reddick and Chris Jones. Reddick and like, Chris Jones, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we might have a Super Bowl MVP who's not a quarterback this time, although Mahomes probably wins it regardless. Yeah. If he's yeah, but if they win. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I agree. Like, real quick, I, I just want to talk about the point spread because it was it was really interesting to me that the Chiefs opened up as one and a half point favorites at Bet MGM, and within literally three minutes, it had moved to Eagles minus one and a half, and then Eagles minus two, two and a half. I saw so four points. Line. Like that's like all the, like people pouring early money in on the Eagles. I saw something where ninety some percent of the five figure wagers so far have been on the Eagles. I think it evens up as we get closer. The Chiefs are a very public team because of Mahomes, and people could be like, "Wow, I can get points with Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to take that." I think it evens up, and the spread gets a little a little shorter. But I was interested to see just how much all the, all the early betters who are generally pretty in tune with what they're doing. This, these aren't casual people, right? After a Super Bowl, these are people. Take it seriously. All the money's coming in on the Eagles right away. I, you take anything out of that? I mean, are you the same way? You're thinking this doesn't seem to me like yes, it's absolutely the Eagles are the right side here. I was stunned that it moved like that, and and I was trying to think like what you know, like what is it that just has the money you know flushing to one side? I it's weird, but the game that popped into my mind, um, I was in Russia covering the Olympics. Okay, and I, 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 okay. I we took a U turn here. All right. right, I set out in the middle of the night in Russia. Right, I can't even remember what the hell time. I mean, it was ridiculous. I just gotta watch. It's gonna be such an amazing matchup: the Seahawks versus the the Broncos, Peyton Manning, oh, Russell yeah. Wilson. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be such an amazing game. And I was like, Denver is gonna kick out of Seattle. I, I was so positive. Denver's just gonna house them, kill them. I get there late, <laughs> wherever I found it. Oh, Some Russian no. bar, which I mean, yeah, like right? whatever. Like, and I get there, and it's like they're getting slaughtered. They're getting destroyed by by Seattle. And I'm like, what in the living hell just happened here? I don't know why that game popped in my mind, but I think it's because of the fact that you're you're gonna have some people who are gonna approach this and they're gonna look at it and they're gonna go, okay, look, this guy's the goat. I don't care if Mahomes is hard or not. He's the GOAT. Kansas City's the shit. They got this off. They've been here. How many straight AFC title games? Um, you know, look at all the quarterbacks that they've slayed to get here. Um, you know, Mahomes has been up against everybody at this point, and he's still standing. And and they're going to look at Philly, and they're going to, yeah, Hurts is good. But he's, you know, what has he done? You know, where is it? You know, okay, he's good. Yeah. He's been good. He's taken a big positive step this year. He's not 100% healthy right now, you know. Phillies, the class of the NFC, NFC seemed like it wasn't all that impressive other than the top two teams. One team gets dimensional in the NFC title game and it's a blowout, but it's just, it's going to be one of those games where I think some people are going to want to doubt um, Philadelphia because they're going to look at Mahomes, they're going to look at Kansas City, they're going to look at Andy Reid, and they're going to say, this is the natural progression of the window. This is where it's going. We thought Kansas City was going to be the dominant team. I don't know. We'll see, man. This can yeah, yeah. I don't know why it that with that game popped in my mind. Like I, like as I was sitting there and I was right now starting to think of games in the past where um I didn't even see that one live, but I, I just remembered instantaneously sort of after Kansas City won tonight thinking like, Yeah, Kansas City's probably gonna win. This this feels to me like Kansas City should be the favorite here. And then when the line opened and it was Kansas City favored slightly. And then by the time I got back to the hotel, it was like it completely moved oh. in the opposite direction. I was like, I don't know what's going on here. I have no clue why. Yeah, by the time back. I refresh my browser. By the way, I just thought of you leaving your log cabin in Russia, and <laughs> outrunning the car like Rocky IV. Remember when he was <laughs> he's running up the mountain before he fights Drago? I thought that's you going to the bar to, to watch the Bronco Seahawks. Yeah. You know, many more, you know how many mornings I set out to cover, you know, skiing or whatever it was, and I'm like taking like the olympic village bus or whatever and there's so many russians in like adidas track suits and there's techno music on. i was like this is so i was like this is the most stereotypical 
ever seen and it's completely living up to it. And none of them thought Ivan Drago jokes were funny. None of them. <laughs> oh, that's, that, I can't go to Russia. Never, they never thought of By the way, that, that, was my, that was my first Super Bowl, Bronco Seahawks. And I remember in the press box doing a radio thing. I agreed to it. And an hour before the game, and I started going through like, this could happen, this could happen. But the one thing that's definitely not going to happen in this game is the Broncos' offense is not going to get shut out. That that's out there somewhere in the ether where I said it's the only thing that can't happen in the Super Bowl, and then they pick up eight points and pretty much should have got shut out in that game. So, just goes to show you that you don't really know what's going to happen in this game. The the one I'll say this, and you hit on it too. The the one thing that kind of interests me about the matchup here is that if you're going to beat the Eagles, I think it's by running the ball, and the Chiefs flat out can't do it right now. I, I don't know if that comes to life a little bit, but if you just look, Mahomes is a He's, he's great. Like he is one of the most talented, maybe the most talented quarterback I've ever seen. But if you're just asking him in a one dimensional offense on a bad ankle still to just drop back 45 times against that pass rush, I don't know how well that ends up. I really don't. Like this is a, it just seems like a bad matchup for the Kansas City offense based on what they do well and what they don't do well against that Eagles defense. It's just, it's, again, 70 sacks. They had 50, I think they had 15 more sacks than every other team in the league. Uh, they can get after them. Yeah, I will say this, though. I think in Kelsey could be out of their line. I mean, look, no offense to oh. the Eagles linebackers, but I'm telling you right now, like, and, and to me, I still believe that they're going to say not that's it's not accurate. I still believe Kelsey is, is like Mahomes' first read, whether he's his first read or not. I think Mahomes knows whether or not this guy's going to be open. I think he steps to the line. He knows the matchups and instantly knows, am I going to be able to go to him or not? And if he doesn't, he has a way of making sure he knows whether, and where's Kelsey going? Let me look and see how the coverage is adjusting to him. And if he's going to, I, I do think that's going to be a huge um, matchup in the favor of, of uh, the, the Kansas City Chiefs. I, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, running it, if, if that's what they got to do to, to, to win a game. <sighs> I don't, I don't know that it can. I don't know that Pacheco, they can do it. Listen, Pacheco has had moments, okay, where, where like, you know, no, I mean, he's had moments, okay? Like, he's, sure, sure. I don't, you know, I can't, I think he's got the talent that, you know, in a in a one-game situation like this, I don't know the consistency over the, the course of a season, whether he can be a thousand-yard rusher or whatever, but I mean, like, in a one-game situation, could he gouge teams? Yeah, I think he absolutely could, and um, I still think that, that's something I would want to have in my pocket because look, they can rush the pass. There's no, I mean, there's, it's a brutal front, like Philly's front. Is brutal. And I, and if Mahomes isn't going to be, I, I don't know, man, Mahomes look a lot better now than he did. Yeah, and he so, gave him two weeks, two weeks too, yeah, right? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Look, right. I know. Like, like, like two weeks, it could be like a Rocky montage. Like he's running on the beach. Right. Like I have no yeah, idea yeah. at that point. Hugging Creed in the water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have no clue. Him and Kelsey you know, jumping around, right. like <laughs> hugging each other in, in, in a Rocky montage. I mean, it could absolutely be what he looks like in two weeks. So, um, but yeah, it's a good thing to have in your pocket. And, and it, I will say this, like when McCaffrey scored that touchdown against the Eagles, um, it, you could tell. I mean, like even the crowd, you, you get them a little nervous because they're like, "Oh God!" Like, wait a minute. Like, let's not get this. I think if Elijah Mitchell had been healthy for this game and he plays, maybe it's a different situation in terms of volume of run and different things that they were doing. Um, but I don't know. It's a, it, it'll be the Andy Bowl. Though. That'll be fun. The Andy Reid Bowl. It will be fun. I, I am very impressed by. There's two things about this game that really impress me. Um, I'm impressed with. Andy's the AFC has been great and I am impressed with what Andy's been able to do the last several years. Keep this team focused rosters in Andrew's control, you know, uh, at, at this point, you know, with all due respect to Brett Veach. I mean, we know they're going out there getting players for Andy. Um, there were times I questioned defensively. Some of the additions, there were times that I questioned spags. They're here. They're in the Super Bowl. I give Andy a ton of credit for that. Um, they lose Tyreek Hill. And again, Mahomes covers a lot of things. Quarterbacks always cover a lot of things. But Andy's temperament, how he's handled a lot of things with this organization. There's been off-field stuff too, by the way. Uh, off-field stuff with Andy's son. I mean, there's just been a lot of okay, going on with the with the the Chiefs. So to make it back, um, you know, in this situation, I think is especially with Mahomes being hurt, is a really a feather in, in Andy's cap. And then on the flip side, I'll tell you what, Howie Roseman, I've never it's amazing to me that you had 
a team after the 20, what, 2017 season um, wins the Super Bowl, Nick Foles. <laughs> Look at the rosters. It's the roster's no. been entirely rebuilt. New coach. Including the coach, too. New, yeah, new yeah. coach. New entire coaching staff. New quarterback. Like the, the whole, it's an entire retool. I've never seen anything like this ever. It's, it's, it is. I, guess, I mean, Washington did it. Uh, you know, I mean, when Joe, the Joe okay, Gibbs but I'm era, talking about in the salary that, cap era. Right, right, pressed. right. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. It's a totally different deal now. It's, it's hard. I, I mean, no, Roseman, I was even wondering because I did a story on the, the 10 guys whose legacies could change the most over these next two, last two games of the season. And I thought about Howie Roseman. I thought about, you know, Ron Wolf's in the Hall of Fame. There's some general managers in the Hall of Fame. If Howie Roseman leads two Super Bowl teams within a five-year stretch with a different coach, a different quarterback on both of them, uh, and he put together everything about this team is him. He did this. I, at some point, I mean, I'm not saying that puts him in the Hall of Fame if they win this, but what if he gets another one? Because this Eagles is set up pretty well to, to yeah, be I mean, competitive in the next few years. Yeah. yeah, and he's a young guy. Yeah, he could he could end up getting in that conversation. I, I think that as great as Sirianni has been, I think Roseman is kind of the key figure non-player wise in this Eagles organization. And just why are they here? Yeah. Sirianni is a great coach. No doubt. Their coordinators are unbelievable. They both might be head coaches in a couple of weeks, probably not this time around, but they're in a conversation. But I look at Howie Roseman and say that this dude is, he is hit. He's, he's on that Aaron judge, you know, he hit a home run every, every time up at bat. It's just crazy. About every move he made, we all laughed at, Draft Jalen Hurts in the second round. I did. I was like, what are you guys yeah. doing? Jalen Hurts, yeah. second round? I don't even know if I draft him. I didn't need a quarterback. Like, what do you and it's it's turned out magically for them. Everything they've done has turned to gold. Howie Roseman just he's on a he's just on a streak for the ages, really. And he, you think about like they went through salary cap hell. They they did a deal with Carson once that by the way, when they did the deal, it made sense, right? It was the right deal to do. No one, yeah. no, not one person looked at that deal and went, oh, that's nuts. What are you doing? It made 100% sense. And then it didn't. Like it was I, just sometimes that happens and I, they figured out, you know what? Something not right here. Like this guy's not going to live up to it. And there's other stuff happening behind the scenes in terms of his coachability that is not working. And what did they do? Instead of dragging it out, they, they did the thing where it made them look bad and they dealt them. And people were just clowning. And I was one of the ones who was like, man, that's horrible. Like, oh, my God, that deal. Right. And so to reconstruct a Super Bowl team in the middle of that, like basically signing a franchise quarterback deal and then dealing it like so quickly and taking the cap hit and all these other things. It's it really is remarkable. And, uh, you know, I I give him a lot of credit. He's young. But I'll, I'll tell you what's fun about this is Hurts is coming up on that like those contract talks with hurts start this off season and i'm yeah listen yeah i'm telling you right now hurts let's say they win the super bowl right hurts is even if he's decent in the super bowl you know with what the volume of the offense that he contributes where he's at i probably gonna finish second the mvp it, third, explain maybe. to me how that guy isn't looking for a contract that starts with a five in the apy like 50 million. Ooh, I'm ooh. listen, I'm telling you, like, I don't, wow. may, maybe if they do it this off season, maybe it's not in the fifties, but I'm going to tell you right now, if they win the Super Bowl and then he plays next year and then like he's staring at a tag, there's just, I, this is, oof, this is going to be, I'm extremely excited to kind of watch how this whole thing unfolds because if there's any franchise that should, that should have some consternation, outside of the Rams uh -huh. of doing a deal after three years, it's the Eagles. Like I'm sure they look, I, do they believe in them? Absolutely. No doubt. They believed in them. They were telling me they believed in them in August when I'm sitting, I'm list, I'm literally sitting with Sirianni and, and Howie and they're like, and I'm just like, come on, man. Like I'm trying, I'm trying to get past hurts. I'm like, let's talk about, let's talk about what you're going to do next off season when you're, you have you know, <laughs> two first round picks and you're going to be aligned and you're going to have all these, you'll be attractive for veteran quarterbacks. And they're like, no hurts. Trust me. Like hurts is going to make it. Um, you know, we'll, man, they loved, they loved once at a time too. loved him enough yeah, to do that yeah, deal. And then it that. turned out wrong. Well, I remember being at their other Super Bowl where they beat the Patriots with the Foles here. And, you know, Wentz was obviously a big story there because he was hurt and, you know, yeah. couldn't play, but 
everybody, you know, Wentz is our, no, Wentz is our guy. Wentz is a superstar. Wentz is going to be awesome. We're coming off what Fools. probably was going to be an MVP Fools. season. Before he got Fools on an all-time heater. Just, just the unbelievable. All-time. All freaking time. Yeah, he almost, <laughs> Purdy almost pulled off a Foles, basically. But, no, I'm looking for, I think it's a great, great Super Bowl matchup. As you kind of, I could talk myself on either side. Both number one seeds, both deserving teams. I, I don't think anybody is going away like, oh, this team snuck in. They don't deserve it. Like, no, nah, we're, we're going to get a good game, I think. I, I think it's a really, really good one for us. We get to talk about Andy's past with the Eagles. We took, a, you know, and his relationship with Howie Roseman, the Kelsey's brother versus brother. That like, thing, that's going to get old. That's going to get old. You think I it, love the Kelsey's. You think it's going to get old? I think it's going to be amazing. It's going to be fun. I right? hope it's good. I, I just, Come on. Somebody, brought, somebody brought, I can't remember who it was, somebody brought up the Jerome Bettis Detroit homecoming, and it just gave you flashbacks of like how awful that storyline got beaten to the ground. Oh my goodness, we do that. We we just beat no storylines into the ground. I don't think you're talking about. I'm, I was, I'm on, <laughs> listen, man. I'm a, I'm only on a I'm only on a title game slash Super Bowl pod talking about Brady. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Beating what if, we should just every episode just force it in. What if guys? <laughs> we'll just, yeah, we'll, the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah. We'll yeah. just dig about five minutes of Brady. Here we go. You ready? <laughs> if you want to fast forward it, you got five minutes. Just bump ahead. Oh man! All right. No, this could be great, sir. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking, I just, I again, I, I just, I want a good game. It's we got one game left until September. Want it to be a good game. I think we're going to get it. And to answer everybody who said it on Twitter, because I have not responded. I'm sorry. I was like, tra- you know, between traveling to Philly, figuring out how I'm going to get to the Senior Bowl tomorrow all the 50 million things that was going on. I saw so many tweets that were like the Trez Paler over my dead body game. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two in a row. Mm -hmm. Like two, it was two in a row. I thought this was another one. The Osai, that moment when he takes off running and Osai, I'm like, yeah, that's that. That's that dude. Like, man, you know, what a play that was. I I even said right away to our work people, like we'll be talking about that play 20 years from now. Like immediately, like what a, everything about it, the, the call itself, but just Mahomes on a bad ankle. Running for first down, are you kidding me? Are you kidding I, me? Yeah, just yeah, just great. I hope this is. I hope it turns into the salty, like pissed off rivalry. I really do. I hope. I hope. I hope this is uh, Colts Patriots. You know, I hope this is like could be. Too. I really neither, do. Neither of these teams are going anywhere. They're neither. I mean, to, I don't think so. Hell, the the Chiefs traded Tyreek Hill to kind of reload, and they're still back in the Super Bowl. <laughs> they're not going anywhere, man. Like, I don't think the Bengals are. Either. Bengals got to do that Burrow deal. I don't know how he keeps Jamar Chase. You talk about you talk about a guy who starts with a five in that APY. Yeah. Like, ooh, ooh, yeah, Jamar Big Chase, six. T. Higgins, Mixon. I don't know how you keep everybody. You know, there's gonna some of those offensive linemen when they're healthy look pretty good. Like Hubbard. I mean, yeah, yeah Hubbard. They, I, there's a lot of guys you gotta have to keep. A lot of dudes. Yeah. So well, I thought uh, I, I was glad that at least one of them lived up to it tonight. I'm I'm excited that we have a. A one seed versus a one seed. There, there's, you know, it's it should not be a donkey of a Super Bowl. God, I hope this doesn't turn into the Sochi. <laughs> like show show up <laughs> after the first quarter. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> turn on the techno it's music. The first play, the the safety that was over Peyton Manning's head. Oh, it I was, was like, oh, they're in for it here. Yeah, it was it was an unforgettable memory. <laughs> this is what I get for trying to watch football in Russia. <laughs> uh, all right well i appreciate everybody checking in um appreciate everybody tuning in be back on wednesday you can get frank on twitter at yahoo schwab you can get me at charles robinson you can get stone rochelle at sj rochelle and as always especially on a night like tonight help us keep trez paler's legacy alive uh, checking out breaking that's a capital t slash Therese for the all juice tea or hoodie Remember that proceeds from that purchase go to support the Therese Paler Scholarship at Howard University. Uh, and also, uh, if you would like to contribute to that or the scholarship in his name at Power Mizzou, check out our podcast description. I think you should uh, make a little contribution uh, after this weekend's games just for the phrase over my dead body game. I think it's worth making a contribution. <laughs> I really do. He gave that to us. We'll carry that forever. Um, so dap them up give them a little bit of a of a, of a bump in the, in the scholarship area i would appreciate that leave us a five-star review tell a friend uh until then we'll see you wednesday peace